so team let's begin with learning of specialized process models already we have talked about so many set of models and we have gone through the procedure of each one so specialized process models takes many characteristics of one or more of the traditional models which we have discussed however these models are used when narrowly defined software engineering approach has to be chosen so you know you have to remember it that uh, it is not the case that uh, there is no process here yes certainly the process is there in these set of models so the first one in the list is component based development we are going to three see three different types of specialized process models the first one is component based development so the component based development model incorporates uh, many of the characteristics of the spiral model okay uh it follows the evolutionary approach in uh spiral model which demands an iterative approach to the creation of the software so as we have seen uh, the more and more we come to know about the uh, product we keep on adding the functionalities to it but yes we keep risks in our mind uh modeling and construction activities here begin with the identification of candidate components now you know uh uh to give you an example i would say uh we have got this basic calculator application where i have got addition component i have got subtraction component and that addition component we have to use uh in uh, the software which i am going to deliver to say one of the shopkeepers okay so what i have to do is uh, now there is no need to separately develop this addition part okay the need is to use that addition part as it is in the new software which i am going to build so modeling and construction begins with identification of candidate components so so i have identified uh, from the customers needs that the customer will have to go for doing addition so that addition component and i, I have found out now i may use it from many of the addition components which are available as per the domain requirement so these components can be designed as either conventional softwares or object oriented classes or package of the classes uh now we have to follow certain steps here so uh, i would say the first step is identification of the components uh now we have to research the available components which are present then we are going to evaluate them for the application domain which we have for the software to be developed and what the component was available there then component integration issues are also discussed you know now i have this addition component i have this subtraction component and i want some mechanism so that they will communicate so that is called an integration i am going to provide one interface where say i have to do 2 plus 3 equal to 5 and i have to again perform some subtraction so 2 plus 3 minus 2 was the actual expression which i wanted to evaluate so 2 plus 3 is one component then some value minus 2 was one component so what i wanted to have is this 2 plus 3 result i wanted to pass correctly to the subtraction module so for that integration is there okay now next is a software architecture is designed to accommodate the components so uh, now i have got n number of components i am going to place them by preparing a design now once i have placed them now i have to add them to the actual architecture and now comprehensive testing is conducted to ensure that functionality is proper okay so this is how we go for developing component based softwares now we are going to talk about certain advantages of it of course it supports fast development because we are going to reuse the components easy maintenance of components is there because uh, you know uh, we said that uh, we are going to focus more on components yes so maintenance of components is easy i know uh, which component does what functionality so if at all i get some problem in the functionality i am going to focus on that component only okay good quality of developed software if good components are used that is important 
easy creation and upgradation of software of course because creation becomes easy because i am using reusable things and upgradation becomes easy because whatever new functionality i wanted to add that may be also available as one of the components low cost due to reusability of the components so these are the advantages there are some disadvantages also now here developers risk of having their component repos repositories become obsolete due to pro poor planning or unfavorable industry trends now the calculator application which i had developed was uh, say i'm just giving an example so i had developed in uh, visual basic application now uh, the uh, technology which i am going to use is say java for example so now it becomes uh, difficult for me to uh, uh, merge that vb application into java's application you know so component repositories may become uh, obsolete because the chick technology is continuously changing or because the industry is favoring to some other technology now customers are facing here risk as well as challenge in using component based application to met to meet their enterprise requirements so now so uh, whatever components we have got are not suitable to customers uh, uh industry trends now uh, it poses risk to the profitability and long term survival as as you know uh, uh, the technology keeps on changing so the the component which i had built 6 uh, uh, months ago uh, spending so much cost on it now it is no longer uh, used in the industry so profitability and survival issue comes here now second is specialized process models so uh, as you can see here so specialized process models are focusing on mathematics that is why the symbol the formal method models enables you to specify develop and verify a computer based system by applying a rigorous mathematical notation you know uh, like that we cannot uh, learn it but we should know mathematical notations are followed here and that is why training becomes very much important here a variation on this approach called clean room software engineering is currently applied by some software development organization we are going to talk about clean room uh, approach very soon uh, the next is ambiguity incompleteness and inconsistency can be discovered and corrected more easily with the help of application of mathematical analysis can you see that so if there is uh, ambiguity there is some uh, there is no clarity there is incompleteness there is inconsistency Th these all problems can be very easily corrected of course because they are uh, identified with the help of mathematical analysis uh, now there are applicability issues here the development of formal models is currently quite time consuming and expensive considering mathematical background it requires because few software developers have the necessary background to apply formal methods extensive training is required so you know team has to first spend time on getting the training and then they can apply it so uh, that increases the timeline of the product development it is difficult to use the models as a communication mechanism for technically unsophisticated customers so you know i cannot explain my customer how uh, how and in what format i have represented the requirement so there it becomes a problem uh the third is aspect oriented development uh so it defines aspects that express customer concerns that cut across multiple system functions features and information so you just remember it that it is aspect and it is customer concerns now customer concerns is customers requirements it provides process and methodological approach for defining specifying designing and constructing aspects it seeks a better way to apply modularization in software development by effectively handling the issues of cross cutting concerns cross cutting concerns customer concerns aspects everything we are going to learn so the first is aspect oriented development uh so as you can see the diagram uh you will observe that uh 
the complex software system is divided into features functions and information content okay so uh, this is how i have tried to represent uh, it in the diagrammatic form and these all are forming the components or i may treat them as object oriented classes so this is what traditional object oriented development approach is so what you have to remember is because the system is complex we are dividing it into number of components and each component is having some features and functions which are expected by customer now what is different in uh, aspect oriented development you see this is what this traditional system is which we have right now discussed now here uh uh there are cross cutting concerns here okay so focus on concerns which are uh, high level properties of system and they are spanning the entire architecture of the system so for example uh, security so it is not uh, the case that i want secure application or i want only one secure component what i want is security should be part of the whole architecture and that is why when i talk about cross cutting concern what you have to remember it, it is spanning the entire set of features can you see that okay so uh, it is spanning the entire architecture and our focus is on these cross cutting concerns and they are now treated as aspects so uh, again i would like to say a concern is customer required properties or areas of technical interests and aspect is mechanism for localizing the expression of cross cutting concern so how the security concern which is spanning the entire architecture i am going to manage with the help of aspect is the motto of these aspect oriented development so uh, now i would like to give you example of aspect as user interface it is there uh, throughout so weaving mechanism extensible affordance interface kind these are all concerns and i am treating them as aspect because it is going to span the entire architecture user interface is expected throughout the uh, working of the software now features we are going to understand aosd stands for aspect oriented software development ensures better modularization mechanism of program designs thereby reducing software design development and maintenance costs so because modularization is better cost spend is lesser here aosd ensures improved and smaller size of code as a result of addressing the cross cutting issues so uh, we are making sure that the code is smaller so that it becomes easier for maintaining it aosd encourages the use of code as a result of addressing the cross cutting issues aosd is considered as easier to evolve system so you know uh, with each step i am getting more and more about that system so uh, there are these tools uh, i would like you all to go th through at least one of them and understand okay what it is all about so i am gi uh, giving here a list of these aspect oriented development tools uh, whichever you like you can just go through it okay so aspect hash is a free aop framework which is for dotnet then aspect c++ is an aspect oriented extension to the c++ pro programming language aspect j is a seamless aspect oriented extension to java programming language As aspect workz is a dynamic lightweight and high performant aop for java nanning aspect is a simple yet scalable aop framework for java so you can see there are uh, many options available for java there the list is very long i have just uh, make it short so that you get the idea of what is happening in real world uh, talking about aspects so these are the references you go through it and uh, you just uh, have to remember that we have talked about three specialized models can you name them so the first is component oriented development uh, the second is uh, formal methods model and the third one is aspect oriented development thank you see you in the next session